watching ABC 7 News at 5 on your side. You think that living in the suburbs is saving you money? Think again. A new study says that you are spending thousands of dollars a year just heading to work and back. Greta Cruz live now to break down the numbers for us. Greta? Well, Leon, we're talking about the folks who live way out, but like these folks, they come here downtown to work. The cost of transportation, no mass transit, you may need an extra car, may actually be eating up those savings. Dan Dulap commutes from Crownsville, Maryland to downtown D.C. My commute ranges between an hour to, say, an hour and a half, depending on the day, one way. He's not alone, and it's not cheap. In fact, a new study finds that for those living 15 miles or more from work, higher transportation costs more than offset lower housing prices. This is just conclusive evidence that you can't just keep sprawling out and covering up the land with people for going for 100 miles. The Urban Land Institute launched a new online cost calculator today. You plug in where you live and work, and it estimates your transportation costs compared to your housing costs. But maybe the question is, is I'm going to move. I'm, gonna, I'm living in the city and I want to move out to the suburbs. What do I expect I'm going to be spending on my transportation costs? Possibly a lot more than you think. Living in Tacoma Park, D.C., for instance, might cost you 31000 in housing a year, and moving out to Frederick would save you money. But look at the cost for transportation. It more than doubles to 18000 plus, which is why urban planners are hoping more people will follow Ashley Lark's cue. She chose to live and work in the same Arlington community. You can take the metro, you can go to the grocery store. I mean, you really get the, the atmosphere of a community as opposed to, um, you know, having to spend your life in your car. Now, the solution researchers say is planning development around mass transit. They also suggest if you're looking at that beautiful house out in the burbs to first try taking that commute, making that commute during rush hour, not on a Saturday morning before you buy. Live in Southwest Washington, Greta Cruz, ABC 7 News. All right. Thank you, Greta. This is Fox 5 News at 10. Now, a lot of families try to save money by living outside the Beltway and then driving the long commute to work. But living that far away can also be a burden, especially for families trying to make it on a middle class income. Tonight, we're breaking down the numbers for you. Fox 5's Melanie Alnwick is helping you find out exactly how much your commute really costs. As housing prices soared, people on moderate incomes moved further and further out to afford their rent or mortgage payments. The trade-off is a longer commute. Thousands of people like Vicki Asamoa leave before dawn to beat traffic. I'm really tired, but you know, you, you get a wreck. I have no choice. When you factor in the cost of that commute, the Urban Land Institute found it takes much more of your income to live further out. Clark County and Warren County, Virginia take the largest bite. 58% of median income goes to housing and transportation costs. Commuters from the city of Fredericksburg spend 56%. It's a huge cost because, you know, cars cost a lot of money. You need more cars, generally, for a family in further out. Gasoline, of course, is a big expense. While housing is more expensive inside the Beltway, most residents drive fewer miles and have more access to public transportation, and that cuts down on the overall cost. ULI found on average inner suburb residents spend a more manageable percentage of income on housing and transportation. Arlington County, with its urban mix of lower cost housing options, fared best at just 39 percent. You may end up with a smaller dwelling unit on a few, fewer, a smaller piece of land, but you also might save. Uh, uh, or at least come out even in terms of how much you spend money in terms of travel. Paul McMurtry enjoys the cost and time savings of his commute just down the block. Oh yeah, definitely, without a doubt. If you can walk, it's, it's the best option, I think. The goal is more affordable housing in the inner suburbs and denser communities and transportation options in the outer suburbs so that we can all get a break. Now you can go on to this website and you can actually put in all of this information that is specific to you if you want to get a much better picture about how much your commute is going to cost you and about whether it makes sense to actually move further out. And of course, we've put this link on our website, myfoxdc.com. Just go right here under money. For your Fox 5 Money Report, I'm Melanie Alnwick.
If you travel the Dulles Toll Road, be prepared for changes in the way you pay there. For those of you traveling eastbound, cash will be accepted during the week from 5 in the morning to 11 at night. Now, if you travel the westbound lane, cash will be accepted from 8 to 11. Of course, you can always pay with a debit, credit card, or even an easy pass. I need to be taking notes on that <laughs> <No>. one. <laughs> a report on lead levels in DC. Sitting in traffic is nothing new in these parts. Just last week, we learned people living in Prince William County and the community of Linton Hall have the nation's longest average commute. It adds up to 46 minutes one way. But today, we hear that moving out to the suburbs may not save you the money you think. Digital correspondent Bruce Lashan is live in Gaithersburg with more on the true cost of commuting. Bruce. Yeah, Leslie, check out the traffic here. This is a daily grind on I-270 on the way to Frederick. A lot of people moved out here thinking that they were going to save some money. But now, according to this new study, it suggests that it is costing you more than living closer in and avoiding this big mess. So you deal with a daily commute that sometimes stretches to two or three hours. People like that drive me nuts. And you figure the frustration is giving you a bigger house, a bigger yard, and a better quality of life? Think again. Commuting from Frederick meant a $10 a day metro and another bus trip from Frederick to the metro in Shady Grove. So that's seven, it's about an $18 a day trip. Those nickels and dimes add up, and when you add transportation costs to housing costs, a new study from the Urban Land Institute suggests working families living in the outer suburbs are actually paying almost $2,000 a year more than people in the inner suburbs for the privilege of a longer commute. People will travel so far to get this affordable housing that it costs them more even than the housing does to travel. The study found the people paying the least for their combined housing and transportation costs are the people living in Arlington, Alexandria, and D.C., an average of less than $30,000 a year, and they end up with more time with their family. We moved into Arlington because we wanted to be as close to the city as possible, so we didn't have to spend a lot of time in the car commuting, and we get to spend time with our son. The Urban Land Institute's whole reason for being around is to make cities more livable, so it is a little bit biased here. But the study suggests that if you live more than 15 miles from your job, the costs of commuting are eating up any savings from cheaper housing. We have an online calculator, a link to an online calculator at WUSA9.com. Leslie? All right, Bruce, thank you.